cultures around the world so that way we can discuss and um, get to know each other a little bit. And we hope that everything we do brings you honor and glory. Uh, Lord, we thank you and we ask that you continue to watch over us as we have this meeting and as we go about our days after this meeting. So Lord, we thank you and we are uh, so grateful to be here. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, I uh, went on via my YouTube search, and uh, he was gen generous enough to reply back to me, and we have connected from that point on. Uh, a very fascinating uh, individual. He's He decided, I think, Anton, you're going to get into your own personal story and you'll talk about the country you live in. But you decided on your own to move around the world, I think, and Africa became your first place. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's the first place I decided to venture. I've been out to other countries outside of the United States, but this is the first place I decided to live outside of the United States. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I don't like to talk too much at this point, but please tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your history, and then kind of get into sure. your presentation, please. Thank you. Sure. All right. So first of all, thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to see all of your faces here. Uh, even if you're not showing your face, that's okay. I'm sure you have a reason, but I'm happy that you're here. And yeah, so my name's Anton. Thank you very much, Tyrone, for the introduction. And uh, to give you some background information, I grew up in Los Angeles, California. Um, so and that's where I spent most of my childhood. And I was pretty fortunate to grow up in a household that um, my father loved to travel. And so he really cemented for me the importance of travel and of learning about different cultures. And as a Black American, he really um, instilled in me the importance of understanding my origins, our origins. So I remember, you know, watching documentaries about Africa, listening to African music. And so for me, that foundation was there uh, for Africa. And so I, I'm very appreciative for my, my father doing that for me. I do remember going to school, however, and having a different picture painted for me about Africa, about the continent of Africa, right? A very negative, limited image and um, story about Africa. By the way, I hope the internet's okay, you guys. Sometimes it's, it's kind of glitchy in my heart. And are you, can you guys hear me okay? You got a little drag, but go on. It's Okay, okay, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I, I was going to use the Wi-Fi, but I decided to go ahead and connect to my data. So that's one thing that happens sometimes when you're down here in Namibia, and it's kind of overcast out here. So that's probably what's interfering with the internet, because uh, when it gets overcast. But anyways, as I was saying, um, I remember in elementary school and in middle school, you know, they, they presented a very limited and um, lopsided view of what it meant to be a person of African descent. And I obviously that conflicted with what I was brought up learning and knowing and our dignified history, right? And as people who originate in the continent of Africa. So I've always had that deep interest in Africa, even though um, the educational system in the United States tried to stifle that and different people that I encountered, um, but I maintained that and so, um, even before it was really um, a popular tourist destination as it is kind of becoming now, I always had a fasc fascination with Africa. And so I thought, okay, you know what? Um, why not try living out there? You know, um, I saw a lot of uh, YouTube content, a lot of people on YouTube sharing their experiences going to Africa. And that helped inspire me. It showed me that it was in fact possible. And so I decided, okay, why not? And yes, I did study uh, anthropology at Arizona State. And um, anthropology is just the study of different cultures, the origins of, of humanity, um, the origins of societies and things like that. And so anthropology actually helped, you know, build that self sense of confidence as well and gave me the confidence to travel and explore the world too. So yeah, I first um, landed in Runda back just this year. I haven't been out here this long, that long. I started my journey in Runda I landed in Kigali, Rwanda in, in March, and I spent a couple of months there. 
Um, as Tyrone mentioned, I have a YouTube channel, so you, you all can go and check that out. I have a lot of content about that. And unfortunately, Rwanda was not the place for me. Now, Rwanda is an incredibly beautiful country, and I highly recommend that uh, brothers and sisters in the diaspora check out Rwanda. However, I decided that Namibia would be a better location for me. And so I hopped on a plane and came down to Namibia, all right? And we can talk about, as you guys ask questions and whatnot, how I decided Namibia, right? Because there are a lot of countries in Africa and I was thinking about Ghana, I was thinking about Gambia, I was thinking about Senegal, Tanzania, Kenya, um, but Namibia seemed like it had some uh, unique attributes. Um, it's For one, it's kind of a semi-arid climate like Arizona, which is where I, I've spent most of my adult life is in Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, that was one interesting draw for me. And of course they speak English there. So I thought, okay, they speak English, we'll be able to adjust more easily. And so I decided to come down to Namibia. I'm very happy that I did. I think it's a fantastic country. I think a lot of people um, don't really appreciate what Namibia has to offer, but I really think you all should really check out Namibia and put it on your list as a potential country to visit in Africa or to even relocate to or to re retire in. It's a beautiful country. So yeah, I think that's about it. And also just want to mention, you know, it's, it's, it's very affordable out here. I know a lot of people, the first thing they wonder is about the cost of living. Uh, Namibia's cost of living is similar to South Africa. And so um, it's much less, of course, than, than the United States. All right. Um, the most expensive thing out here is probably going to be the rent. And um, but that's still much more affordable than cities in the United States. Okay. The most affordable city in the United States is still going to be more expensive than living out here in Namibia. And I'm in Vintook, which is the capital. Um, there are other cities like Swakop Moon, which is a beautiful coastal city here in Namibia. I highly recommend it. And um, yeah, like I said, I have all, a lot of content over on YouTube. You guys, I try to be as detailed as possible. And so that way you all can have an um, inside insider view as much as possible of what's going on down here in Namibia. So. Yeah, are there any questions or, or anything like that? Would you take any pictures of the um, Namibian area um, to share with us? Um, I have a lot of pictures and things like that, but unfortunately I didn't have, I don't have it prepared right now to be able to share with you. Let me see. Hold on. Um, yeah, it says host disabled. I don't have it with me, unfortunately, right now. I wish I did. Um, so I, I apologize about that, Dr. Um, Geraldine Cook. So, um, but I do have a lot of content over on YouTube, all right, you, you all. So, and um, I document a lot of things. So you will really be able to see uh, the beauty of Namibia and all that Namibia has to offer. It is a... Um, semi arid climate. Um, there is a little, there's quite a bit of diversity. There are mountain ranges, there's ocean, there are beaches, and it's a very beautiful place. It's um, winter transitioning into spring right now down here in the southern hemisphere. So it's the opposite of in the northern hemisphere. So when it's hot um, up there in the United States, you could come down here and enjoy the cooler weather. Oh. Any other questions? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Johnson. I was going to ask, I'm sorry, uh, what is the most difficult part of adjusting to Namibia? Oh, that's a very good question. The most difficult part about adjusting to Namibia. Honestly, you know, you know what, you all, uh, Namibia is a very easy country to adjust to. And again, I really apologize about lag. Okay, that's one issue. Maybe that's the difficult thing to adjust to is sometimes the internet slows down. In general, it does not, but when it gets cloudy, it kind of does. Um, but to be honest with you, it's not. It was not a difficult adjustment coming here to Namibia. It is very similar to a Western country, but with an African flair. Um, one thing is that they drive on the opposite side of the road. And I'm sure a lot of people who have traveled have experienced that travel to other countries. That is pretty much one of the most difficult things to adjust to. Okay? Um, 
a language everyone speaks English in addition to speaking um, their indigenous indigenous dialects like Oshibambo and Nama, uh, which is a beautiful language with clicks in it. Um, but there wasn't too much to adjust to out here. To be perfectly honest, I'm being perfectly honest. I say I spent time in Rwanda, as you as I uh, mentioned, and that was a more difficult environment to adjust to. This place feels like a city in the United States, in my opinion, but just with an African flair. There, so it's certainly in Africa, right? So you get to have that experience. But Roslyn, there wasn't so much that I had to adjust to. Like I said, maybe it was the the traffic than driving on the opposite side of the road. And um, I will say that they, the drivers have the right of way out here and pedestrians generally have the right of way in American cities where I've been. And out here, um, cars have the right of way, which I don't like, and it's kind of dangerous. So um, yeah, I would say that's probably the hardest thing to adjust to out here, you know? Thank you, Austin. Lily Witcher, I think, is, have a question. Any, any other questions I anyone have? I did you know I had uh, a question. Maybe, yeah, Rhonda? I wanted to ask about hospitals and doctors. Good question. He may have momentarily froze. Anton, I think you're probably, you're frozen momentarily. Okay. Ms. Witcher, that is a great question because we all have concerns as we get a little older, right? Exactly. Okay, that's a fantastic question. Yeah, good question. So they have, um, they have a public healthcare system, which is kind of like more of a socialist healthcare system. Okay, let's see. What about the local transportation systems? Um, let me know when, if I, if, when I unfreeze. Okay, you you are kind of in and out, so you you you're you not hear me here. okay? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. But if you can complete the question about the healthcare, and then he has a question as pertaining to the transportation system. So healthcare one. And second would be the transportation system and costs and et cetera. Can, can everyone, can people hear me now? Yes. All right. Can you guys hear me? Your picture is frozen. Okay. But we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. I can yeah. hear you. Okay. Yeah. So. The healthcare question, that's a very good, that's a very good question. Um, so they have a public healthcare system out here and then they have the private healthcare system out here. Um, so, okay. Okay, great, thank you, thank you. All right, perfect, thank you. I apologize again for that it's because it's cloudy. So anyways, um, yeah, they have the uh, public um, healthcare system out here and then they have the private, healthcare system out here and public is basically free. Okay, so it's like Scandinavian countries, but um, of course they're gonna are like Canada, but there are gonna be lines, longer lines, and, and um, sometimes you might not be able to be seen. And most expats use the private healthcare system. And um, I did get to go, I went to a public hospital to see how that was. And I've actually been to a private one too, to see how that, that was. The private one's way faster, of course, it's, it's more, you know, glitzy and, and fancy and it has all of the state of the art equipment that we're used to back in the States. And it's still much more affordable than what you pay in the United States with insurance, okay? And you're just paying out of pocket, it's still more affordable than what you pay in the United States with your insurance, all right? Um, so yeah, they do offer insurance out here. They have they call it medical. What do they call it? I think they just call it medical coverage or medical aid. But that's their form of insurance. So if you're coming out here, you can actually obtain uh, medical insurance or medical coverage. So um, 
Uh, Lily, does that answer your question? Yes, that, that, that's pretty good. That, that answers some of my questions. Thank you. Lily, can you hear me? Did that answer your question? Yes, yes right? I can hear you. That that's, that's answers most of my questions. Thank you. I, I must be frozen. Uh, you're in and out. OK. All right, sure, no problem. Thank you for asking. And then um, Mr. Kenneth was asking about uh, public transportation. OK, I'm sorry about the lag, you guys. I think that's what's happening. So yeah. Um, let let me go ahead and answer, uh, Doctor. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Kenneth was asking about the public. Um, I know the lag is really bad. I hope you guys can hear me now. The lag is really, really bad. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. And no apology. We all, we all. Do understand different issues. That are, that are you know what? I think it's just the lag. So I'm just going to go ahead and answer um, Mr. Kenneth's question, all right? Because I think what's happening is I'm coming through, but the, there's a huge lag. Okay. So to I hope you guys can hear me. To answer Mr. Kenneth's question about public transportation, they do have public transportation out here. Um, they have buses, uh, but most of the time, Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. You got, you guys understand. So, um, yeah, they have buses out here. They have local buses that go and they're very affordable. I have not personally taken a local bus out here yet. Um, but you can try taking the taxi. The taxis are the best route for you guys out here for you all when you come to Namibia, because the taxis are very affordable. They're less than one U S dollar to take a taxi. All right. So you really don't even need to take public, public transportation. You can. It's out here. It's available. It's not that extensive, though. Public transportation out here is not as extensive as it is in the United States. So you can um, definitely try taking the taxis. All right. They're less than one U.S. dollar to get from point A to point B, unless, of course, you're going somewhere much farther than it'll be be about 24 Namibian dollars, which is less than two US dollars. Okay, so um, um, they do have public transportation, Kenneth. It's just, it's as an expat, if you're coming out here or first, you're probably going to be using the taxi service. You could even take a taxi all the way to other cities. Uh, they have these seven seater taxis. And I took one all the way out to um, Swakamund, which is a beautiful coastal town. And that cost about 200 Namibian dollars, which is about, I think that's like 15, about 15 US dollars, somewhere around there. So um, yeah, and they do have different options for interstate travel or interregion travel. They call their states regions out down here in Namibia. So yeah, they, they do have, they have public transportation, but you probably won't be using it when you come out here. So all right, any other questions? There's gonna be a lag, obviously, when I stop talking, so. Valerie Kittner has a question. Uh, yes, actually kind of a twofold question. It has more to do with, um, and I'm sorry, I missed the first part of the, the meeting talking to Tracy, but he's, he's wrapped up right now trying to get yeah. out of, of Nevada, but. Um, Anyway, what is the longest tourist visa that's available for Namibia? He's momentarily froze right now. Okay. Uh, okay. What was your question? Uh, I was uh, curious about what is the longest tourist visa that's available? Oh, visa, yeah, and, the, the, right. the time. Right, and then the second part would be 
uh, what is the process if you're wanting to apply for like dual citizenship? That was the other part too. Okay, that's a really fantastic question, Valerie. Thank you for asking. Um, mm -hmm. Longest available tourist visa when you come out here to Namibia is uh oh, he's breaking up. <laughs> yeah, Anton, the lag is where we can't uh, pick up on your reply. I'm sure, I'm sure you're trying uh, to make three it. months, so about ninety days, and you have the ability to renew it once. All right, or twice. Okay. Yeah, I hopefully, hopefully. So three months, 90 days. Right, with one renewal, okay. And you asked about dual citizenship too, right? If you want to be right, okay. yeah, what would be the process right. I, I, for applying for dual citizenship? I hope I'm coming through now. I hope I'm coming through now. But so to answer the question, and again, if there's lag, it's because, like I said, it's, it's taking time. So, anyways, um, yes, you can get about a 90 day uh, tourist visa out here in Namibia. And, it, like I said, it lasts three months. And then you have. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Testing, testing. Yeah, we okay. all hear you. Uh, the question you. now is about dual citizenship. Yes, three months, 90 days, with, with up to run one, one renewal, yes. All right, well, that's a good question as well about dual citizenship, all right? And um, yeah, I, actually, that's something that I have not looked into yet, Valerie, so I'm not really sure about that, okay? okay. Um, I wish I knew. But I, right now, as of right now, I'm not really sure about dual citizenship here in Namibia and what the process is like. Everything so far that I've done in the country has been very straightforward and easy. All right, mm -hmm. everything has been spelled out pretty clearly here. Right. So I'm sure it's pretty, I'm sure it's not a, a hassle to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Anton, I have a question, please. Um, one of the things that uh, yeah, you, you got you all. Um, there's just a large lag. It's like a one minute lag. So yeah. I'm hearing you got you all, and then I respond, and then about, yeah, and then about a minute later it comes through. Gotcha. And look, we had similar issues when we did. Uh, Tanzania, uh, Tanzania. So we understand that. So yeah, the next person who asks, it's going to take a minute okay. before I hear it, and then I'll answer it. It'll probably take a minute before you hear. It. I apologize off the way. No, no, no. Miss Witcher, do you have another question? Your hand is still up, or did he respond to your question appropriately? No, I don't know how to take my hand down. Uh, <laughs> <not> a... Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, for future reference to take your hand down, I believe. Um, Lisa will show me how. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Anton, are you still there? I think he's out momentarily. There he is. Okay. Anton, I have a question, and, and, and it's about basic living. Okay, no problem. Uh, it's, yes, it's about, Tyrone, you can ask. Okay, thank question. you. It's about the basic living of feeling human, and rather than like a foreigner in a country, and you know the treatments that we have here in America, and we talked uh, in South Africa, we talked about how police treat citizens over there, even the prison systems, and there's a far range of differences how people are still treated like human beings uh, in the countries that we've discussed, which was Uganda, uh, Ghana, and also South Africa. What about in- Oh yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. It's just about a minute lag, so I'm still okay. here. I can hear you, and Tyrone, you said you had a question. Yeah, the question is how are African-Americans treated 
uh, by the uh, enforcement agencies in those countries. Is this, I'm, I'm sure there's a vast difference, but like if you're pulled over by a police officer, uh, if you haven't had that experience, but if you're familiar with what they do and how they treat their citizens there. Everyone, while we wait in Namibia, that's a very good question. That's, okay, that's a very good question, Tyrone. Thank you for asking. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, um, well, you know what, like, I haven't had that experience again, and the lag is going to be coming through, so it's going to sound like I'm cutting in and out. Um, but I, I have not had that experience yet with any police officers out here. Um, of course, this is a majority Black country, so when I've come here, everyone's said, welcome home, brother, welcome home, brother, welcome home, brother. So there is a sense of welcoming, sense of dignity here as a black, black man, as a black, as, as a person of Af African descent. Um, however, I have not had any dealings with the police here yet. I have heard that the police here can be pretty, pretty brutal sometimes or um, can be um, kind of harsh with people. That's what I've heard, all right? And, and But I haven't had that experience and I haven't seen that that happen at all at either here okay. in Namibia. So, um, it, you know, it depends on who you ask. But yeah, I haven't seen either uh, in the streets or anything. Great. Great. Hi, Pat, Mama Pat. Hi there. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing fine. I'm sorry I came in late. No, you're here. That's the most important thing. Don't, don't be sorry because you're here. We're happy that you are. Like that? And I have not had any dealings with the police at all. So, um, yeah, I wish I could answer that question. Certainly not going to racially profile the next question because, of course, there's the lag. So I can hear everything you guys are asking, though. Right. Great. Okay. Um, I look. I'm. Uh, anybody else have any questions? And again, I know you understand that Anton has done his past underneath the issues that we're having. So, um, I have one more question. What about grocery stores? Mr. Witcher, while he's trying to answer your question, he did a YouTube video on shopping in the grocery stores there. Uh -huh. And uh, and I'm sorry, I'm talking that talking over him, but just trying to make sure I, we're compensating for the lack of time of his okay. uh, comments. And I'll I'll post. I thought I post that out, but I will post it out. He shows the same shopping conveniences that in those stores over there as we do here in America. It's the same oh, same wow. identical setup. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the quality of the products are equal or greater or the same. And, uh, but it, there's no differences in the supermarkets or the, shop, the malls that are, they got three beautiful malls there right. uh, in, in that country too. But I will post that out so everybody can be aware of it. And Anton, awesome. I'm taking a little bit of your thunder if you don't mind. Okay. I have a question, Tyrone. Do uh, I want to know, are there a member of the smart cities that is over in Africa that is booming with 
uh, under the okay. new. Um, uh, okay, that's a fantastic question. That's a really good uh, question. Um, so, uh, grocery stores, there are a lot of options out here in the way of grocery stores in Namibia. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, he, uh, right now Tyrone is speaking. So I'm going to be quiet for a second. Let's call it. Pat, we, we have a lag time. He's trying to communicate, but there's difficulties in his services over there. Yes. Yes. We have everything. They have everything they have in the United States in Namibia. Same convenience is the same thing. Yes, thank you, Tyrone. And everything Tyrone says is very accurate. You might want to pose your question again, if you don't mind, please. Okay, um, I've been to several seminars that's dealing with how the growth is taking place in Africa. And I just want to know, well, was he also, with the, his country is also a member okay, of the so SMART. She was, at, I'm going to go ahead and speak now. Again, yeah, I, I'm really sorry about this lag. It's really serious. I can hear everything you guys are saying but then it takes about a minute for it to reach you and then it takes about a minute for what you say to reach me so uh, she was asking about if there are uh, if Namibia is, a, is part of the smart cities um, the initiative of different smart cities and such that are happening in different parts of Africa I think that's what she was asking and to my knowledge there are they are not working on any smart city here in Namibia at the moment they are working on developing um, some oil fields and um, investing in oil. They discovered oil here in Namibia and they are actually researching that and it's actually in a region, I think it's called the Capri. Hey, Tyrone. Yes. Uh, I had a couple of questions. One is, what's the crime rate like? And is there any uh, wildlife ref refuges that you know you can ride through and visit? Okay. Those are two good questions. I'm sure he will respond. Antoine, I'm, I'm sure there's a lag, but Kenny has a question he's posing for you. Okay. That's a fantastic question, Kenneth. Let me go ahead and answer again. Um, and like I said, there's going to be a minute lag, so I apologize. <laughs> um, yes, I heard you. Uh, you said, um, are there the, the wildlife, wildlife refuges? Yes, there are wildlife refuges here and that you can drive through and you can see elephants and giraffes. It's really beautiful and I think it's pretty affordable. I have not had the privilege of doing that yet, but they do have that out here. There are lots of options out, out here for the wildlife. You get to feed the elephants and the giraffes and see different interesting mega fauna like uh, elephants, giraffes, and minos and things like that. Elephants. Um, so yeah, and the crime rate, that was another really good question you asked about the crime rate. It is definitely lower than South Africa, I'll say that. I don't have the official numbers right now, um, but that 
That's a fantastic question. I wish I could answer that in more detail, but Namibia is definitely safer than South Africa. I don't know if you guys were aware when they were having those serious issues down in South Africa with all of the rioting and the looting. Um, that did not, I was afraid that that would transfer up here to Namibia, but it did not. Um, Namibia is a pretty, it's a pretty safe country, a pretty stable country. I have not seen any issues since I've been out here. I have not seen any crazy crimes or I haven't heard of any crimes or anything like that. And so, yeah, it, it's pretty safe. Of course, I would say if you're coming out here, exercise caution as you would in any city around the world. So um, you're in Windhoek or in, in certain areas, obviously certain areas are not gonna be as safe as others. So I'm staying kind of in the central location, Windhoek West, it's a very safe location. And um, Slokamund was also very, very safe, but I have heard that when you venture to certain uh, suburbs, like there's one called Katatura, and maybe Komas Dal. There are certain areas where you do have to have your guard up. But if you come here, of course, just let me know, and I'll be sure to uh, let you guys um, know all the areas to kind of avoid. Or you, you don't have to avoid them, but maybe you would go with a local. All right. So that's what I'll say about safety. Namibia is a safe country, and it's a pretty safe country here in the continent of Africa. A pretty stable country and um, definitely safer than our neighbor, South Africa. So uh, that's definitely a plus, all right? So now get ready for the lag as I <laughs> wait to hear your next question. And thank you, Kenneth, for that one. Uh, Lemon, can you mute the mic? Lemon. Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm here, yeah. I'm here with you, I'm hearing you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anton, yeah, I'm okay. Okay, one second. Anton, may I say, make a suggestion for you, please, sir? Uh, I think you've got a lot of good things been thrown at you, and they're great things that maybe if you could do a YouTube video on and post it out, uh, and you can address some of those specific issues like the healthcare industries and various costs. So that will give more, that will drive more people to your YouTube videos, specifically the people that's been on here today. Uh, if that makes sense to you, sir. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we got Michael. Michael Hoston. Uh, yeah, that on. makes perfect sense. Yeah, I could, I could totally do that. I think that would be a fantastic idea, especially since we sort of had this um, lag in the in the in the internet and all that. So yeah, I would love to answer all of these questions. I think I, that's a good idea, Tyrone. I could make a, a YouTube video addressing some of these questions so that way you you all can really um, have a better understanding um, without the lag. So right. yeah, I can certainly do that. I've answered a lot of these questions. Well, some of these questions already on some of my previous videos, but I would certainly do another YouTube video um, answering all of your questions uh that would be a pleasure and that way you could really um hear everything clearly and, and understand right great great um michael hoston is on mike do you have a question you i i don't know if you're connected no he's not well um Look, because of the lag time, and I, I, I know that your heartfelt desires to have everything perfect, and I got it, but we are experiencing issues. And for everybody who came on today, uh, I'm very grateful that you're here. And uh, But that being said, um, I need to introduce a special guest that we have on, uh, Mr. Lemon Black. <laughs> and uh, have you guys heard his song? 
Africans Unite? I have, and it's, it's, it's a great song. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Anton, I know you've heard the song. Uh, Kenneth, have you, and Pat, I don't, have you guys heard, heard the song? No, I have not. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, it's posted out on, uh, in the forum, and, uh, but I will send you a copy of it so you can listen to it. Um, I'm thinking, and Mr. Black and I both feel like this song has international appeal, potential. And uh, what we're going to do is to take the song itself and move it in a different direction where Mr. Black would do a musical production and we're going to incorporate pictures from people all around Africa and the diaspora all around the world. Uh, into the uh, video. Uh, Lemon, do you want to kind of speak a little bit to that or are you muted out when you can't talk? I can't hear you, uh, Lemon. I said I just posted the studio section of the video. Are you hearing me now? Yes, I hear you, yes, yes. Hello? I, I hear you. Yeah, I just I just posted the studio section of the video on the group. Okay. Exploring the continent of Africa. So you can check it out there, but the audio is not yet out. We're preparing to release the audio officially for download and stream. Okay. Globally. Oh, and well, for now, the studio section of the video of the studio section is out. I, I uploaded it. I posted it on the group. So if you go, up, go to the group, you will see it and you watch it and watch it and share and you get you have an impact of the lyrics of what we're talking about. Yes. Um, and we are everyone to make you aware uh, we are in discussion with a, a person that might be able to, and we, we know she can, uh, help the song go into the UK for publication purposes in the Caribbean islands. And uh, again, the goal with this song that he has put together uh, is to reach every person of color, no matter where you are, South America, Japan, it doesn't matter, you'd be in Russia. Uh, the song has a significance to it, and if you haven't heard the song, I do apologize to you guys. But uh, who want me to send them a personal copy? I bet you will get a copy. Valerie, have you heard the song? I have not, and oh. I've been waiting. I've been you know, waiting to hear it. I think I'm right up in the last week, but yes, I would love to hear it. I'm sending you a copy when when we finish our meeting. And Peter, have you heard the song? By the way. Thank you. I think I've lost uh, Rita. You still on? Yes, I'm here. Have you heard the song? I have not heard the song. Oh wow! Okay. Well, let me get my pen. I am going okay. to. Can I? Go on, Mr. Black. Can I make a so? Can I make a suggestion? Do. Can I make a suggestion? Please. Hello. Go ahead, uh, Lemon. Okay, okay. I will suggest um, anybody that have not gotten the song, our members only for now, because the song is not yet officially released. So any of our member that really wants the song can send you his mail. Or send me his mail, inbox the mail, and we'll send the song to the person to listen to it. Because as a member of Exploring the Continent of Africa, it's an advantage for you to be among the first set of. Great. Uh, Tess, did people you to get the song to listen to it? And Lemon, I must tell you, uh, everybody who I have shared that song with, Everyone, uh, I've heard nothing but very positive comments about it. Last night, uh, we played the song at a, at a gathering with our family member, and they all enjoyed it. Uh, so the lyrics, the music content, and everything is just beautiful. 
And uh, I'm telling everybody who I am talking to, who's listening to me, trust what I say. Trust me. And I think you will be as um, inspired as I am. Once you hear the song and hear the significance of what this song is talking about, it goes very deep into who we are as people and, and as human beings. And Lemon, uh, extraordinarily, you, you did a great job, Lemon, and uh, we are going to push that song in every direction that I think we can. We don't have the uh, connection in the music industry like some people do. We don't. I'm sorry. But I think we have determination, and that's what it really takes. And uh, again, he's going to share that song only with people in, the, uh, in our group. And uh, I'm going to make sure that that song become a part of my music listening to uh, profile of things, OK? Because it's very inspiring. And uh, it touches into our heart of who we are as people. And uh, the title of the song is Africans Unite. And uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a, it's a clarion call, you know, calling on all Africans' descendants across the globe, across the world to unite and live in one accord. That's the aim and objective of the song. So, as, as I said before, anybody that is interested in having the song, that you want to listen to the song, you can send me your email address. You can send your email address and I will send the song to you through your email. But the song is not yet officially released for the public. So as, an, as a member of the Exploring the Continent of Africa, like you, it's an advantage for you to get the song, be among the first set of people to get the song before it gets released officially. So I can send it to any member that really wants it through mail or WhatsApp. Miss Witcher, uh, your daughter Lisa has heard the song. I don't have you heard the song, Miss Witcher? No, I haven't heard the song. What? I'm, I'm real Lisa. because I write music and I sing too. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's nice. Wait, the star is born today here. <laughs> um. I think I know I said this to select people, and it was not that I was discriminating against anybody, but we're trying to now create the awareness of the song itself to our members. And um, the intent at this stage uh, is that we are, and Lemon is going to do a musical video production. Uh, the, the verbal, the, the a song you hear that and you and with, when you hear it i just promise you you are going to be inspired and if you will reply back with how you feel about the song after you hear it as well but um the goal is lemon that we had discussed was that the musical video will capture african americans images across uh the whole world africa specifically and also the diaspora so um and we want to show a uniting element to his song. And uh, it's just one of the projects that we're working on, by the way, everyone. It's one of the projects. We got other things Lemon and I are going to be working on in the future, too. And uh, I think these things are generational changing type of uh, content. His song will change the minds of a lot of people and put you on a very positive way of seeing who we are as people. And uh, Mr. Lemon yeah. Black is a God sent person to us for that reason, just to make you guys aware. His creativity has come out in that song. Don't let me know his colleague. It's a great song, man. I wish that we had the capability to play it um, in this meeting, and I don't think that I know how to do that. If I could, I would certainly do so. Um, Tyro? Yes. I'm sorry. This is really uh, There's a bit of background noise. Brady, I... your voice is very low. I'm sorry. Um, so there's a bit of background noise. Can you turn your speaker up somewhat, please? I'm sorry. I can't. I'm trying my best to hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lemon, I think we got background noise with you. I'm going to mute you momentarily, okay? Okay. Rita, Hi. I'm sorry. Hi. Okay. 
Hi, Rita. I'm not able to hear at all. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, we were trying to get Rita, uh, but we had some difficulties connecting with her. And one other thing, if you look at the chat, some people have typed some courses in and not been responded to. Okay, very good. And thank you, Kenneth. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with my speaker here. All right, for those who have asked questions, uh, to Kenneth point, they are posted out in the chat, so please bear with us, okay? Uh, I got to go, I have another engagement. Roslyn, so sorry. Treating Anton, how much is the rent? Uh, and, uh, Anton, some of these questions that are being asked, if you can see the chat, if not, I'll copy these questions and send them to you. And again, at a later date, okay. if you a video addressing specifics like rental costs, it is in the country that you live in. If you can kind of give it like a slight comparison as well, uh, that would be great. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I can do that. Okay. I can certainly do that. I can, um, I'll try to do a video that's addressing all of the questions that were specifically in this um in this meeting that way we can have a very a very you know a clear and concise um understanding of everything that you guys asked me i'll, I'll try to do a video for, about that and if you will to give us just a little bit of shout out if once you respond to those questions if you could just make sure you say it, it's directed to the members of the uh exploring exploring the continent of africa uh, that kind of helps to get us a little bit awareness. And I know you've got a heavy base of people, but if yeah, you absolutely. Could do that, that would be appreciated, okay? Uh, for Ms. Winter, yes. to Lord, to Lord yeah, I can certainly hand. do that. I'll definitely do that. I can. Uh, 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 Mrs. Hall, I hope that you might still be on. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss Pat, I've already sent you a copy of the song in your inbox. And Valerie, you have a copy of the song in your inbox as well. Thank you. <laughs> hey, no, look, now don't party too hard on that song. <laughs> be, just be inspired, okay? <laughs> and, and please share your comments uh, and specifically share your comments out in the forum so Mr. Lemon Black can hear it and this is his personal creativity that he put into this song he put his heart, soul and spirit in, into the songs, into the words and uh, if you're not impacted by that song I can promise you I can promise you you will once you finish listening to it and uh, it, it has such a unique beat about it, too. Tyrone, Tyrone, would you send me a copy as well? Uh, Miss Witcher, let me see if I have you listed. If you promise not to be getting up and dancing once you hear, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have you in my database. Uh, yes, I do. Hold on, hold on just a second. Nope. It's getting ready to come to your attention. And some of you might be listening to the song already while you're talking to me or while I'm running my big mouth, brother. So bear with me. <laughs> Mr. Witcher, you now have a copy of the song. All right. Thank you so much. It's been sent to Rita and to Valerie and also to... Um, uh, Mrs. Giles, she's on the uh, conference as well. And I know um, everybody, I think, uh, has been privileged to the song. It's on the infinite meeting. If not, uh, then we'll make sure that you get a copy of it. Uh, Tyrone. 
This yes, ma'am. Uh, how can I send? Uh, I would like to. Uh, right now, I can't even put in the question that I want to put in to ask him. But I'm really concerned about the progress that is taking place as far as agricultural and infrastructure in the area. Okay, very good question. That and if you, Pat, if you send that to me, I will make okay. sure that Anton get this. And again, if you will subscribe to his channel. And uh, that's that on YouTube, and uh, he will address these things that we're talking about today. Yeah, okay. Okay. He he's a he's a little professor, as what I refer to him as. He's very professional, and I'm sure the question that you have, he'll get, get down to the de details, and you will uh, get a, uh, an appropriate answer. Is there anybody else on here that might have questions? And obviously, we're trying to work through the difficulties of this connection issue, but uh, certainly we don't want anybody with questions to not to go unanswered or to you fail to ask the question, because I think it's critical. We're trying to explore the continent of Africa and uh, learning about each country and their uniqueness and to find out that we can live over there just as I don't know we live over here in many instances, and I've heard that repeatedly, and Anton is another testament to it. Uh, if you guys didn't hear uh, the Zoom meeting about Uganda, wow, it's beautiful over there and uh, great living over there. Uh, South Africa do have some crime problems, but it's a beautiful country, too. Tanzania is a beautiful country, and uh, we got Ghana coming up, too, everybody. So bear with me on that one. we got a few other countries that we, we got lined up. But while I'm on, got everybody on, uh, I have posted out in the forum a group of meetings that we're going to conduct, and it's called a tough question, a tough topic uh, discussion. And uh, these, if you haven't seen it, please read that out in the forum. Uh, we are going to get a panelist, consists of two panels, one from Africa and one from the diaspora. And there's going to be some tough topics that we're going to talk about, reflecting upon us as people, who we are and what we are and how we feel about ourselves. And I'm going to pre-select the panelists to speak on each subject matter and uh, see where we go with it. Now, I can tell you some of the uh, topics that I posted out. Um, the one topic is, do, are we inferior Black people? Are we? And that's a question that it can be rebuttaled against in many ways, and I got it. But we need to sort of dive deep into that with a, a deep understanding of why this word of inferiority has been on our backs ever since we've been born onto this planet Earth. And how we individually and, and as a group can dismiss that. And Anton, I think he's interested in being part of one of the panelists, he said. And another subject, a topic, tough topics, as what is will be entitled. Uh, we are going to discuss the relationship between Africans and African Americans. And uh, listen, I've heard a lot of back and forth. Uh, I had, for instance, a gentleman in Nigeria. Um, I had a discussion with him, and and he said, "In Tyrone, you live in America." I said, "Yes, I'm an African American." He said, "You're not an African American. You're a Black American." And I said to myself, who in the hell you, excuse me, y'all, who in the hell you think you ought to tell me who I am to claim that I am to be? You don't have that right. So I was offended by that. But then there are things that Native Africans are offended by us. And I, I think we need to have that discussion, a real honest discussion, how we feel about uh, Africans and how they feel about us. And there has to be some learning that will take place between the two once we have that discussion. And the third topic, ladies, is not going to be one that many people are going to probably not like, but I did research, and by the year 2023, it is estimated that over $10 billion will be spent on wigs and uh, what's the other stuff that people put in their hair? Over $10 billion. That's a whole lot of money. And uh, I'm not attacking anybody, but we're looking at the realities of issues and how they're impacting us. And if you took that $10 billion that's being spent into the hair and wig industry uh, and put it into something else more productive, how far could we go? Now, we guys spend money on things too, and I'm not ignoring that. So that's going to be part of the argument. 
So I want people to argue both sides of the fence, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. And I have a friend, he is a retired federal judge. He has agreed to, in part, you know, he'll exercise his judgeship ruling over the panel to make sure everything's civil and we're not beating each other up over it, okay? I hope, uh, so I hope you guys will be in, uh, interested in these tough topic discussions. Yes, definitely. And I want some good debaters. <laughs> Uh, when you get on, uh, we're going to set it up in, in the process that we'll give each person and we'll formulate what will be the subject matter to discuss and the parameters how to discuss them. But again, I'm not looking for somebody at college professor to come and discuss what we all feel germane about yep. as human beings. Uh, regular people expressing their opinions and also being willing to learn, okay? And I'm asking everybody, too, along the way, if you have what we will say a tough topic, please recommend it, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. We want to kind of open up, and this is exploring what we're doing, not just the continent of Africa, but exploring ourselves, so we can better uh, become as who we are as, good, as people, which we are. But anyways, uh, anybody has anything to discuss, please uh, take the floor. Uh, I actually, hi everybody. I'm I'm Tess. Um, I have a YouTube channel uh, with, uh, along with Anton. It's interesting that you bring that up because actually, um, on my channel, I actually have uh, Anton and I, as well as Roslyn, we discussed a lot of the things you just brought up. We talked. Our latest video was about the hurt black man, where I talk about some of the issues I face when I have dated black men. Um, and I think it's interesting you talked about the whole wig and hair thing. White women spend. At, at least more money than black women on their appearance though so yeah. that's not a necessarily a black woman issue that yeah. is a woman issue where women are valued for how we look and not what we think women in general spend more money on their appearance that's not black women don't spend more than, than white women though i wanted to point that out and, and it's not like you you need to be on one of the panels test <laughs> <There's Lisa. laughs> Um, it's just it's just a topic that like on my channel we spend a lot of time talking about some of these yeah. issues uh, that black women are facing or just women are facing and stuff of that sort. Um, yeah. So I, and I I am an anthropology uh, student as well. That's what I got my degree in. So I've done a, I've actually done a lot of ethnographic studies. I've lived in Thailand, Ecuador, um, Vietnam, Mexico. So I I've got a lot of like interesting views on things because of my travels. I, I think I've seen two of the videos that you and Anton uh, teaching abroad, is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, see there, I know you. <laughs> yeah, and then on my channel, Yeah. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do my hair, okay? <laughs> I, I didn't put my face because I was like, I don't want to comb my hair today. <laughs> oh, okay, well, trust me, I, I think you're very appealing to the eye, so uh, I'll leave it up to you. But you are in the, are you one of the members of the group, I guess? Uh, of, of the Facebook group? Yeah, uh-huh. I think I tried to join, but Rosalind's going to help me join. I'm kind of um, technologically challenged. Oh my so. God, you don't but sound yeah. like way. <laughs> Sorry, Anton. Oh, dang it. You the lag. Joined, you joined, Tess. I, you joined officially. Oh, okay, I joined. Um, okay. Well, well, Tess, uh, you can help us out in many ways, and I'm glad that you're speaking out. You listen very uh, seriously, and I, I can tell that you did that, and you kind of brought forth some things that, uh, look, we are by no means uh, cut in stone as to what and who we are. We are just learning, and that's why the, uh, the title of the uh, group is Exploring. Uh, and as we explore, we learn so much about each other in, in the beautiful continent of Africa. And it's been very challenging to find people, to be honest, uh, to be willing to come forth as Anton volunteered today to do. And uh, because, you know, it takes a little nerve, right? You put yourself out and you're going to be speaking to a group of people. They don't know you, you don't know them. But you have to build trust along the way of presenting the uh, uh, country that you're speaking about, about specifically. And that confidence 
it it, it, uh, it, it gets into the people who are listening as well. So, uh, and I, I regret that he had difficulties uh, in his presentation today, but I know Anton is a great, and I call him professor in my point of view. And I'm sure his uh, follow-up videos is going to be great for everybody. So that's why I want everybody to ask questions, because I know he will do a great job of responding to each question. I'm, I know he will. But Tess, uh, I've got to get you involved as well. And I know you're probably busy in your own professional life right now, right? Sorry, say that again. I, I know you're probably busy in your own professional life as we speak now, but uh, we are going to be doing a lot of different things uh, with forming a nonprofit organization. Uh, we're going to move it in that direction because, again, as we explore, we're learning so many different things that are, that are evolving uh, as we go along the way and how people do have real needs that are different than our needs here, but uh, a little unselfishness on our part, we can help assist people, maybe overcome some of the mental hurdles that they have over there that uh, we don't encounter here. We do have our own issues, right? But uh, if you listen, and Tess, I need to send you that song too. Okay. Uh, African. I, mean, I, I would say that one of the conversations I was having with Anton earlier today was not letting because I'm a I'm a school teacher. So I was saying I'm not going to allow my teaching to consume my life because my passion projects or my YouTube channel is very important to me because I think social change really comes through our voices. You know, I didn't I learned how to do my hair from YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, there's a YouTuber, Natural89. Gosh, what is that sound? I have no idea. Y'all, we need, people need to mute their mic if they're not talking because that's 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 a lot. Um, but there's this YouTuber, Natural89, and she has Afro curly hair. And that's how I learned how to do my hair and how to make my own products from raw materials like shea butter and jojoba oil and stuff like that. So YouTube for me was the only positive uh, role models of black women that I could find that I could align with and so I think that that's so important for us to have a voice because unfortunately the media really just allows the most um, kind of uneducated <laughs> trivial people to be our voices and that's not all of who we are you know we're not all from the hood we're not all <laughs> speaking a certain vernacular we're not all uh, you know talking about being pulled up from the bootstraps from the hood and so on and so forth. But that's the one story that's being told right now in America is that instead of us having a variety of characters that are black, we just have one or two, you know, the Jezebel, the Sapphire, uh, the angry black woman, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know how these news broadcasters, they always find this person, well, you know, uh, but, you know when they have to get these, and these same people, and I, and I, I told my wife, when they were in school, if the teacher asked a question, they would not raise their damn hand, excuse me. But now when the news media come out, they're the first one to want to jump in front of the camera. And I don't know why, but uh, and it, it, it's a reflection, but that's what they want us to think and to see. They want us to think that we are uh, just incapable, we're ignorant. You know, they want to portray all the most negative things uh, that we are as human beings, and that's not who we are. And that's, again, why we're exploring the continent of Africa. We know so many wonderful things about that. We're learning so many wonderful things about that continent, by the way. That, uh, and I think Anton included that in his presentation. Uh, he didn't grow up knowing those kinds of things. You know, I grew up in the, in the South seeing white and black fountains or colored onlys or white only places. White people were seeing those same fountains, white fountains and white only. Their takeaway and my takeaway was entirely different how they felt about themselves when they saw white supremacy being preached to them as I saw black inferiority being preached to me. So we both grew up in America, but it's divided, obviously. But uh, this is what we want to get into, uh, Jess, and I do invite you to be part of what we're doing, please. <laughs> Are there any other comments from anyone? Please. We just yes, about Tyrone, I have one suggestion. If you could develop some type of checklist to provide to presenters to make sure they cover the topics without us having to ask the questions. Okay, very good. Based, based on what we ask.